Hi BC, this is uh, Ron Bogey here, Rock and Ronnie, and uh, I'm making this video in response to a uh, subscriber's request for the best sounding rock records. He's an audiophile like myself, and he's you know over the years has got himself what he thinks is a pretty good sounding stereo, and he's trying to find some good sounding rock records because you know he found a list. You can find them on the internet best sounding records and it'll have classical and jazz and because you know traditionally uh, rock is not really what was considered an audiophile uh, record or recordings but now nowadays especially with all the reissues that are coming out and how great they're making the record sound uh, they really are audiophile records now a lot of these new reissues and of course some of the older records where they were made they really really had good sound on the record and so that's what I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through, what I did was I went through my records and I pulled out what I thought were some really good sounding records uh, that I have. Of course, there's probably a lot more, but it's just, you know, a few. If you're not really sure what's going to sound great, I got a few things. He also wanted me to get into uh, how do you identify your first press from a second or original pressing or what does that dead wax numbers mean, that kind of stuff. You know, that could be another whole two-hour show. And there's probably other videos on YouTube that you can go to and maybe they get into really in-depth information on that. I'm not going to do all that. I'm just going to give you a quick and easy way to what I do if I'm not sure. And what I do, let's just say, for instance, now, you've got this a Moody Blues record. How do, how do I identify this one? So this one, I know what it is. This is an original first edition Japanese press and right off the bat I mean wow what a nice cover it's got on it nice and thick but that's not how you're going to identify anything there is a way on a lot of these records because they'll have a number look at the Japanese too the 2000 yen on those Japanese records that's a giveaway because that's what they were worth back the first editions were okay now see the label it's a it's a it's a white label and uh this one has a number of THL-3. Now, what I'm going to go by is this is a white threshold label. I know that's going to be for this year, 73, I think what it is. That's going to be a lot of these, all these old Moody Blues, It's on. they're on the white threshold label. Threshold didn't change their label till later on and when it became a blue label. So that's how I'm going to identify it. And... Well, and, and it came it comes originally it has a red OB down the side so if you see this record it's got the red OB it's got on that white threshold label well you're going to know it's a first edition first pressing of the record not exactly a first press because the way you identify a first press and a first press doesn't always necessarily mean that it's going to be the best sounding version a lot of times when they first started up pressing the records those machines had to kind of warm up it's like an engine for a car because this mechanical, when you first start it up, it doesn't have all the performance it's going to have when it gets operating temperature. And once all those presses got to operating temperature, they really they start, they may really make some great records. So if you look in the dead wax, you'll see 1A, 1B. That's going to be up the first mother, um, both, and A is the side one, B is side two. So it's up the first mother on both. Then you might have 1A, 2B. That's off the first mother and the second one. And those could, those probably are going to sound, one might sound the same, one might sound better. It doesn't really matter on that stuff. But as long as it's just the first first edition of the record, that's the main thing you want to do, what I would look for. Because I don't get really big into all those matrix numbers. That's another whole science. And how you're going to find out what I do, if you're not sure, just go on eBay and look at it. And, and look say put that Moody Blues record on there and start looking and then you'll see sooner or later you'll see someone say this is an original first pressing so you make note okay it's on this say it's on the you know white threshold label or it's on the yellow epic versus the versus the orange epic you know the yellow epic is the older one so obviously I know that's an older record it's a first edition but uh, so if you, you know, I can go on and on and on, but I don't want to. 
So if you just go on eBay and you start looking at the records, you will add, you'll be able to find out which one is the original, which is the first edition, which one is the original press. But, okay, we're done with that part. Now we're just going to go through these, hopefully it won't take too long, and I'll just share with you what I think are some really, really good sounding records. First, I got a couple of these jazz fusion records from the early 70s, Billy Cobham Spectrum. You know, Billy Cobham is one of those great drummers, and on this record, you know, since he's the drummer, they really uh, mic'd up the drums, really, the drum kit really well, and boy, all those cymbals and drums and all that comes through this record super, and they've got some fantastic, you know, guitar work, guitarists on this record, and all in all, this is one of the t number one musical and it's a really good sounding record. Fantastic. Stanley Clark, same idea. Stanley Clark's the bass player. He plays acoustic bass and he uh, stand up acoustic and also plays, of course, electric bass. You know, Jan Hammer's on here, uh, and there's a lot of great music. Some of the best drums you'll see ever, ever, ever hears on this on this record, because you know we've got uh, Tony Williams on drums on this. Uh, Jan Hammer's on keyboards. Well, you can't ask for better musicians. Fantastic record, and it sounds wonderful. And of course, those are on the Japanese. Now we're getting to Frank Zappa. Who would ever think Frank Zappa is making audiophile records? Well, you know what? On that discrete label that he had, those are some, you know, of course I bought this in, I think, 73 when it came out. Great sounding record on that discrete label. But now it's been reissued by that Palace Germany, the same label that's going to be reissuing all those Led Zeppelin records. And wow, this sounds really, really nice. It sounds great. Uh, so if you like uh, Frank Zappa and you're not sure, pick up that record. That's a great sounding record. Then, like I've said before, this is ZZ Top Duguelo Rhino reissue. Just like they did, you know, the Trey's Hombres and a few others. All sound phenomenal. This one sounds great. And then the Crosby, Stills and Nash, Deja Vu. That's a great sounding record there. Of course, I got a little bit better sounding because I got the Japanese version. Okay, here's something to talk about as far as, like, labels go. See, these two records, David Crosby, if only I could remember my name, and Crosby, Stills and Nash, these I purchased originally on this classic records 200 gram vinyl because I had read in a magazine that these both both of these records on that classic label they were phenomenal they sounded absolutely wonderful well I bought them and you know they were like $39 to buy these records or 20 I think they were 29 I can't remember exactly but something like that they were not cheap they might have been about $39 to buy them and so finally I bought them I played them, and wow, great, great songs, great musicianship on this. This is a great record. I mean, I hadn't heard it before, but wow, these are really, really good records right here. And uh, but the sound, uh, I was expecting more, the way that they were going on about how great it was. And uh, it kind of makes you wonder if these some of these guys are getting free records from the record companies where they talk about stuff and you listen to it. So Rhino reissued these. And these are both Rhino reissues. And the covers, I mean, if you want to talk about the record itself, I mean, both of these. Textured covers, it's got that parchment quality paper on it. Uh, back to the original, you know. It's a Rhino reissue. But what we're talking about here is the sound on the record. The sound on the record is a lot better than that classic records issue that I had. So, of course, you know, I sold both those classic record issues. So just because, and I, I personally, of a lot of the records that I bought on this label, I've always found the records that sounded better, some of the newer stuff that's coming out. Because, you know, Class Records is out of business. When they came out back in the, in the 90s, they had started making some good sounding stuff. But now other companies have come along, like Quality Records, Analog Productions, and Rhino, and boy, they are now the true audiophile, making the true audiophile records for people that like rock music. But this record here, this is a great record. If you don't know, this is of course a blues record, but this really, really sounds fantastic. Now this record, I have never owned it on any other ed edition. Quality Records has reissued this, so I imagine it, it sounds better than this one. But man, I'm happy with this because this sounds great. It's like, you know, like I said before, what do you compare it to? I haven't compared it to anything else. And I think this record's fantastic. But yeah, so 
just wanted to point that out, that that is a good sounding record. I really like it. Now, this Neil Young record here, Are You Passionate? To me, this is his best record. This is my favorite one of all. And it's got the best sound of all the records. You know, a more modern recording. And they took their time and were very meticulous. And it sounds fantastic. Audiophile all the way. And it was, you know, record of the month on Stereophile when it came out. So they loved the sound of it too. Now, Acoustic Tech, uh, this is that uh, Acoustic Sounds again. They redid this uh, Yes Fragile record. And now I had this on a Japanese first edition. And this one, Acoustic Sounds, it made a much better sounding record than that first edition Japanese. That just goes to show you how good a job they're doing at Acoustic Tech, Acoustic Sounds, and uh, quality records. Here we go, Gary Wright, Dreamweaver, great sounding record. Now we have the Edgar, Edgar Winter Group, Frankenstein's on this. Now this is by Friday Music. Now Friday Music has put out a lot of reissues too, and they're hit and miss. Not all of their records are the best. Just I find some of the other different issues are better. But on this uh, Frankenstein, of course, this has, I have, don't have the Japanese version of this, but uh, uh, this is, always was a great sounding record. Even if you find that old uh, orange epic, you know, you get it for $5 on, on eBay. It's a great sounding record, it always was. Here's another one of those, Joe Walsh, The Smoker You Are, The Drinker You Get. Now this record here, that song on there, that's a great song, and it always had great fidelity. I used to have it on the ABC Dunhill label, and you can probably find those on eBay for seven, eight dollars, you know, original, and they sound great. That one song on there really, really sounds good. Okay, here we go. Talk about DCC, Direct Compact Classics. If you go on eBay and you start searching DCC, you'll see all kinds of records on there, and they want a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars, you know, big, big money for all those Direct Compact Classics. Well, they issued, they reissued Aqualung when it came out. Direct Compact Classics did. And, of course, I bought it. But this is not. This is a Japanese first edition. And I thought, I think this one sounds better than the Direct Compact Classics. Now, uh, Classic Records has also reissued it. And I have never bought one of those because, you know, they want so much money for them. But as a true Japanese first edition, the mid-range, the highs are so much better on this record. Now that DCC was a good sounding record, don't get me wrong. It had a little bit better bass, and all and all in all it was a great sounding record, but this one just has that more of that master tape sound to, to the you know, mid-range and the high end to it. So I really, I think it sounds better. And again, Mo Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. If there's a, if you wanna search for records on eBay, search under MFSL, and if there's a record there that you really, really like, pick it up on that MoFi because those records all are pretty good. That, those, that's an audiophile label, Mobile Fidelity. Now, not the new stuff that they're coming out, not the brand new stuff. The brand new stuff, as I've said on other, another video, I'm, I'm not big on their, the new Mobile Fidelity stuff. I think some of these other companies that are coming out and making records, they're doing a better job than MoFi. MoFi has lost a little bit of its uh, superiority as far as, you know, they were one of the only ones that did it, and now they're not anymore. Here's an, a really good record, Illusions on a Double Dimple. This is, of course, a, a Japanese pressing, but it came out on that uh, Harvest label in 74, I think, and this is a great sounding record here. It's a pro progressive, you know, it's got a lot of keyboards, got good guitar, great singing on it, good songs, great record. Okay, now here's another label that's come out. This is a label called Audio Fidelity. And they've got a few, a few offerings. And one of the offerings they do have is this 10 years after Space and Time. And I think this is uh, their best record by far, uh, 10 years after. They've got, a, a, of course, a few other great records. But this Audio Fidelity, boy, they did a fantastic job of, of the sound on the record. I used to have the original Columbia 2i. And some of those old original Columbia 2i's had pretty good sound on it. But again, great sound on that from Audio Fidelity. Okay, here we go. This is one of the old quintessential best sounding record kind of thing. This old Super Trap records from the 70s, especially this crime of the century. I've got it on the Audiophile series. Mobile Fidelity also reissued it, and they're both about the same. They're both pressed in Japan. They both sound the same. I've got both of them. Now, 
If you don't have anything else and you want one of those audiophile records to make your stereo sound great, just pick one of these up. Especially if you get it on the audiophile series or you get a MoFi or you can find a Japanese press. Buy that one. Wow. And even if you don't, if you get your old A&M, again, uh, old A&M pressing, original one, it's, it'll sound, it'll blow, knock your socks off how good it sounds. And we have, again, uh, Al Stewart, You're the Cat. That's a good, get some good songs on it, good sound. Cat Stevens. Uh, Teaser and the Fire Cat. That's a good sounding record on the, uh, I guess I have it on a Japanese half speed master here, which is uh, really nice. But uh, the old A&M pressing on this are really, really good too. Now, here we go, quality records. I think this is about one of the first records they ever put out, Analog Productions. And I used to have the mobile fidelity of this. This is better than the mobile fidelity. Now when Quality Records and Analog Productions, when they set out to make this record, they wanted to make it the supreme best in the world that they could ever make of a record in the technology of for 2012, putting all the tech behind it, making it the best they could. This is what they came up with, and it is a state-of-the-art record. It's fantastic. You don't get anything else, just buy that. Okay, Donald Fagan, The Nightfly. Again, this used to be a, um, a digital recording when it came out. It was mastered digitally. And I had it on a um, Japanese first edition. And there was just something about it. You know, it had, I had the CD of it, the CD sounded good. But when I got on the, I got, went on to the record and um, it just had a little bit of that harshness on the high end that I didn't really like about it. But now it's been reissued by Warner Brother and uh, it sounds really nice. It sounds a lot better than that Japanese one. It took that, all those, that harshness they, they got out of, out of this record. It sounds really good. High end sound on that record right there. And then you've got Donald Fagan, this new one, Sunken Condos and this Morph the Cat. They're both double records, and uh, they're a little bit pricey, but boy, audiophile sound on those. Really good stuff, and of course, good music, too. And a little bit more, you know, Stevie Dan. Stevie Dan always had some, you know, Asia. That's not a, you can get that out of MoFi as well. They always had good sounding records, they did. I always thought they sounded really, really nice. Here's a kind of an audiophile record you might not know about, Simply Red. I think this is their first one, and uh, this is of course, you know, oh, analog recorded on tape and mastered, and they did a fantastic job of this. I think this is on an Electra label, but wow, pick this up. This has got really good Sato Red on there. It's fantastic. Now this one's been reissued, and I think Quality Records, or I'm not sure, but I know it's been reissued, and it's probably, this is a pretty good sounding record here, and it's very popular, and that'll sound good on your stereo. This police record, that's another really good sounding record. And uh, what I'll do now is I've got I've got enough, I've got quite a bit of stuff left here, so I'm, we're running out of time. I'm going to uh, pause it right here, make it. I'm going to stop. This will be uh, part one, and then we'll get to part two.